So, okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about living from death. In, in 1 Corinthians 15, starting at verse 36, I want to go down to 40, I mean to 50 in this one. Um, foolish ones, what you sow is not made alive unless it dies. And what you sow, you do not sow that body that shall be, but mere grain, perhaps wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as he pleases, and to each seed its own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh for men, another flesh for animals, another of fish, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differs from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, The first man, Adam, became a living being. The last, Adam, became a life-giving spirit. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural, and afterward the spiritual. The first man was of the earth, made of dust. The second man is the Lord from, is the Lord from heaven. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of dust. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. And as we are, have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Now that's a long passage, but when I get into it. <laughs> so it's 1 Corinthians 15 starting at verse 36, going through 50, okay? So we know that we're those who are the kingdom of God. But Paul just said in verse 50 that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom, right? But are we not flesh and blood? It sounds kind of different. But verse 39, if we look back at verse 39, it says, all flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of animals, another fish, another birds. There are also celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. So it boils down to the fact that we truly have to understand who we are, what flesh we are, okay? We hear those that identify now like birds, cats, dogs, you know, whatever. We think, well, why is that so evil? You know, but if you think about it, those are the ones that have different flesh. But if the enemy can take our identity in any way, shape, or form, even down to the lowest level, if they can take any of our identity, he takes our destiny, our potential. He takes our purpose. And that is what is so insidious about it. So we have to know even who we are because we have to know our identity so we know our purpose, so we know our destiny. In verse 48, it says, as, the, as was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of dust. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. So as believers, we understand that even though we once identified with Adam, the finite one, the finite being, we now identify with Jesus, the heavenly one, right? Because of this, even though flesh and blood can inherit the kingdom, we can because we're now celestial flesh. We're not just regular flesh and blood. We're a different one, okay? Now, I thought it was interesting that Paul started this passage with foolish one. You know, and I th so I looked it up. I was like, what does foolish mean here? And foolish in this situation means ignorant, unbelieving, unwise, and without understanding. And so we know none of us are that way. So we're just going to skip that part and keep going. <laughs> so we're going to be understanding about this. We need, because we have to know who our identity is, who we are. So when we're born of our mothers, we're born into the line of Adam as flesh and blood. We know that. We agree with that, right? Okay. But when we're saved or born again, 
what it says, the old dies and we're raised up as new cre cre creatures, new creations. Okay, we all know the scripture. In 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. But if you look one verse ahead in verse 16, Paul says, Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, now yet now we know him thus no longer. You know, when Jesus was on the earth in the flesh, think about it. He was a man. He was flesh and blood, and he was a man. And he, he ate. He joked around with the disciples. Think of 13 guys that traveled around together. What kind of situation was that? Anyway, but but they joked around. They were sweaty, you know. They were tired. They slept. He was a man, and they saw this. They said, we, we have known him, but now we know him how? As a heavenly man, as a celestial man, because even though he has a body, he's now been glorified. He has a celestial body, okay? And it says, Paul said, from now on, we regard no one, no believer according to the flesh. So I'm not supposed to look at Connie and say, you're a flesh and blood. You're not. You're a new creation. We have to look at each other differently but before we can look at each other differently we have to look at ourselves differently first we have to know our identity we have to learn not to think of ourselves just as flesh and blood okay we have to understand that we've already died we're now living eternal life we're now a celestial being okay romans 6 verse 3 Paul says, or do you not know that as many of us were as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So even though we may still have our terrestrial body, we're not considered terrestrial. We're considered, we are now considered heavenly beings. And our glory, the way that we look in the spirit realm, our abilities, they're changed. They're different now. Okay? So if we go back to the main passage in 1 Corinthians 15, starting at verse 7, it says, again, it says, The first man was of the earth made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Okay? As the man of dust, as was the man of dust, so are those who are made of dust. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. And as we who have born, we have borne the image of man of the dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. So we're now, because we're now heavenly man, because we're now a new creation, a new creature, our blood, our DNA identifies with Jesus. And because of that, we can boldly go into the throne room. Uh, if, if we had not been born again, if we're not a new creation, we can't go into the throne room, right? We have new abilities. Because we're heavenly, we now have eternal life. We have everlasting life. Even our physical bodies are now changed because the same spirit who raised Christ from the dead now lives in us, lives in our bodies. And we can allow him to change us even down to the cellular level. Cellular level. Okay? We now identify with Jesus. So even though he has a human body, he's a, he, he's a heavenly being. So even though we have a, hev a human body, we are heavenly beings. We have to get that into our conscious. We have to think about that. We have to live according to that. Romans 8, verse 9. I know I'm giving a lot of scriptures, but we need to, we need to understand this is, this is what the Bible says. This is scripture. So Romans 8, verse 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Right there. We are a new flesh, according to Paul. We are not of the flesh. We are in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, it's not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. We are changed. We're no longer Adam flesh. Okay? We're no longer sinful flesh. We are heavenly flesh. Okay, so when if we take that and say, you know, there's different kind of flesh. Think of us as different kind of flesh. We're new creation creatures. 
You know, again, it's natural to think about just our natural bodies, our flesh and bone, because that's what we see. That's what we touch, you know. But we're talking about the different types of flesh here. We're talking about the sinful versus the spiritual. We're talking about Adam versus heavenly. It's a new thing. You know, that we already, already know that scripture, where we're new creation, we're new creatures. It's totally new. Nothing that has ever been produced before. So we have to understand if Paul says there's different types of flesh, then us as new creation, it's a different type of flesh. So every time you're looking in where Paul talks about, you know, these fleshly things, these fleshly cravings, these fleshly lusts, that no longer pertains to us or shouldn't because we're now new creatures. Okay? Okay. We can even see this in the difference in the way the scripture de describes a righteous man's death. Okay, in the Old Testament, if you read about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, each time the Bible says, and he breathed his last, and he died, and he was gathered to his people. Okay? They were big on cloud of witnesses, but yeah, we won't go into that tonight. Okay, and then in David, it says you know, he was about to die. He drew near when he should die. And then it says, and David rested with his fathers. It's a different terminology. And even in the story of the rich man and Lazarus, Jesus said that Lazarus died and the angels carried him to Abraham's bosom. Different terminology. Because then we see in the New Testament, when believers, they're not considered dead. What do they say? They fall asleep. Okay, why? Because believers are new creation. We're everlasting life, that, and, and our bodies are different now. Okay? They're different. It's a different being. We have to, you know, let's, let's, let's just keep going. Let's look at it. Is everybody on the same page? Am I way off in left field here? Or right field or whichever field? But, okay, as long as we're on the same page. Okay, going back again to the main scripture in, in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 36. What you sow is not made alive unless it dies. And what you sow, you do not sow that body that shall be, but mere grain, perhaps wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as he pleases, and to each seed its own body. Now God, think about God, think about our Father. He always brings forth good. Okay, even through death, he always turns it for good. You know, a tree falls down in the forest and, he, and it dies. God still produces good because it produces food for other plants. Okay, it's nourishment for the soil. It's habitation for animals or whatever. Even in that death, there's something good, right? Okay, when a seed is buried, it, it has to die before it produces a new plant. Okay, so our Father always brings something good. So if we think about our Adam part, our sinful nature, that in, in, inner self as a seed that was buried with Christ, but by God's pleasure, it produced a new creation. Because God says, says God, God gives it a body as he pleases. So it's his pleasure to bring us into a new creation. Okay? A new inner being, no longer sinful, but heavenly. Okay, if we go on down in that in, in chapter 15, verse 42, it says, So also is the resurrection of the, de the dead. The body is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it's raised a spiritual body. Okay, there's a natural body and there's a spiritual body. But if you look at that, each time, whatever is, is sown, is sown in bad is reaped in good. It's sown in weakness. It's reaped in power. Right? So God always changes that for good. We always, again, we always think about the outward body. That'll be changed when Christ comes. We know that. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about in the spirit man, we need to realize in the spirit man, we're already changed. Does that make sense? Okay? So in the spirit man, what has already been corruption should now be incorruptible. Well, what was dead is now everlasting life. What was sown in dishonor, in sin, is now raised in glory, now raised in holiness, 
right? Because God always brings out good. Okay? So, so yeah, we see flesh and blood, but really, in truth, we should no longer consider ourselves flesh and blood. We should consider ourselves celestial because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So if we're only considering ourselves as flesh and blood, then you might as well chalk up kingdom of God because Paul said you can't inherit it. But we are those who inherit the kingdom. We are those who are living kingdom. We've, so, so if that is the case, then we shouldn't see ourselves anymore as flesh and blood. Does that make sense? I mean, see what I'm trying to get across? Okay. We've inherited the kingdom of God. Okay. Um, Romans 6. It talks about, starting at verse 5, I'm not going to read all this, but it, it, 5 through 13, it talks about that we're, the old man is crucified with Christ. Okay, so the body of sin is done away with. And we know that we're, so we're, you know, the, we're, we're free from sin, right? And that in verse 9, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more, death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, we do not let sin reign in our mortal body, that you should obey its lust, and do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. So when we come to God, we're not coming as little worms in the dust. We're not coming, oh, sinful man as I, woe unto me. No, we're coming as alive from the dead. We're coming as righteousness because God has made us righteous. We are, are alive. Okay, Jesus Christ, just as Jesus Christ is considered the firstborn, are we going to say the first fruit? We are the fruit that's born from his seed that was being buried. Okay, if he's a firstborn, if he's a first fruit, then we're the rest of the fruit, right? In an offering, the first fruit is only the beginning. So what's the rest of the fruit? We are. Okay, so Colossians 1, verse 21 says, And you who were once alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. So, just as we were buried, we were planted and raised as new crea creations because of the body of Jesus' flesh through death, we have to remember it's not not through anything we did it's because of jesus okay then we need to take the work of our death and bury it our planet and plant all the works of the flesh in us does that make sense we need to do what jesus did what did he do he conquered he he took all the works of the flesh and he he conquered them what do we need to do we need to take that in ourselves and we need to conquer that we need to bury that am i making an under Okay, Galatians 5, verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in times past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay? So anytime there's a work of the flesh, we're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. So even that we have to crucify. We have to, with intentionality, and that's the word again, intentionality, we have to bury these Adam flesh characteristics in us so then we can reap, reap the reap the fruit of the spirit so if we go, keep going in that passage in verse 22 but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long suffering kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self-control against such there's no law we know that okay then verse 24 and those who are christ have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires if we live in the spirit let's walk in the spirit okay so 
So when we look at this, sin is missing the mark. Okay? Sin is, we missed it, we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and we're back into righteousness and holiness. Okay? But the tendencies of the flesh is those things that we can call characteristics. Some people say, oh, it's just your personality, honey. No. It's flesh. <laughs> Okay, if you're given to wrath, that's not of God. Okay, that's flesh. But it's a different flesh than we want. It's a different flesh than we now are. So we need to, it's our responsibility to change that. It's our responsibility to crucify that. It's our responsibility, if we're talking about sowing and reaping, it's our responsibility to bury it. But we don't just bury it because we don't want it just to be buried in the garden somewhere we go dig it up. You want it to be gone, okay? But, on the other hand, we, to, we are to behave like our Father. So, He always brings good out of something. So, we need to intentionally bring good out of something, right? So, if we think about these characteristics of the flesh as seed, and we sow it into the death of the natural, then we need to reap a spiritual characteristic. Does that make sense? Okay, just like we sowed our sinful nature, our Adam side, we are now a new creation. We're changed. We're re reaping good. If we're going to sow, sow these tendencies of the flesh, these works of the flesh, then we need to reap good. And we need to change the, quote, glory of the terrestrial flesh for the glory of the celestial one. We need to change that. So, for example... You know, if we have hatred inside of us, we need to intentionally bury that so that we can reap love, right? We need to intentionally bury um, jealousies, reap peace. We intentionally reap rudeness to, or bury rudeness and reap kindness. Let me get the terminology right. You don't want to bury the good stuff. Okay. <laughs> Okay, again, this isn't just burying it. It's not putting it up on the shelf and saying, oh, it's gone, it's done, whatever. It's not burying it in the garden so you can go bury, you know, dig it up when you're ready for it. It's, it's changing it. It's saying, no, I was crucified this. I'm like, if I'm like my father and he changes things in me, then I'm going to change things in me. I'm going to change the wrath for kindness. I'm going to change it for long suffering. I'm going to change pride for humility. Okay, it's, it's, it's taking that and crucifying it, but not just crucifying the old, but intentionally picking up good. Okay? So, so we have to be like Father. Change that. Okay? Go even further. Go even further than that. If we have sickness in us, if we intentionally, if we intentionally bury sickness, we should reap healing and health. If, we, if there's bondage in us, we need to Take out the bondage and replace it with freedom. Intentionally, is an intentionality with the help of God that we can do it. Okay? So it's in 1 Corinthians 15, 49. Again, it says, And as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we've already been like Adam. I don't want to go back. I don't want to have that sinful nature anymore. Okay? We shall bear the image of the heavenly man. We should bear the image of Jesus. So we need to look like him, act like him, be like him. So what does he do? He takes what's bad and changes it for good. All things work together for good. Okay? And what Jesus conquered, think about what Jesus conquered in his life, his death, and his resurrection, he now has authority over. Right? And what we conquer in our life, we should now have authority over. So we need to change the way we see ourselves change what's inside of us to be as as Christ is Paul said to Timothy in 2 Timothy 2:11 and 12 he said this is a faithful saying for if we die with him we shall also live with him if we endure we shall also reign with him and that seems like a oh yeah we just live our life and it'll be okay it's not always that easy. <clears throat> I 
And we can say, yeah, it's real easy. Let's just, let's just bury that pride. I'll just reap humility. You know, sometimes it's a process. And, and, and it's okay. Well, I think one of Steve's verses is like, you plant the, the seed comes off first, the stalk. I always get them mixed up. Yeah. The blade, the ear, then the full corn. Okay. It's a process. And sometimes when we when we're working on burying these works of the flesh, it's a process. But if you see the stalk come up, give thanks. When you see the blade come up, give thanks. Because out in gratitude, that's a fertilizer. That's that's what builds it. That's what will grow it faster. With an attitude of gratitude, we can get there. But if we endure, then we'll reign with him and we'll overcome with him. So, so I will say, let us die that we can live and know who we are in Christ. Amen.